Hello, matey here. Um, thought I'd share how I'm going to do an edit on this picture. I was um, looking through Flickr and um, saw a picture by um, Waleria Bugatti, and um, I really liked it. I thought I'll have a go at doing that myself. So um, I uh, made this pose and asked SE to model for me, and. Um, I'll show you how I'm going to edit this picture. All right. I'm just going to move the green screen first. All right. So I just use the background eraser tool to remove the green screen. In the center of the of the the big circle, there is a little little plus sign. Whatever that touches, it'll delete that colour. So, um, as you can see, the background's removed. Now I'm going to make her a bit larger in the screen, I think. So I'm going to transform her, so it's Control T. And if you hold down your Shift button and drag on one of the corners, it'll resize in perspective. going like that. Right now um, let's work on the background. I'm just going to make a like a blue sky background behind her. So if you hold down your control key and you click the new layer it'll pop a new layer up underneath the layer that we're starting on. So um, we'll turn off um, that layer there and uh, let's have a look we want, want a blue colour. Sky blue colour. Something like that. Um, all right, so I selected blue, <laughs> and so that's the foreground color. So when the foreground color is blue, <laughs> this is the one I want. You, you press your Alt key and your Backspace key, and that fills it with blue. All right, now I need to. Um, I'm going to uh, give it a bit of depth, I think. So I might try this way with the curves. Darken it up a little bit. Now, if you um, click on that um, layer mask of the curves level, I'm going to invert it. Control I changes it to black. So um, that color there now is now invisible. If I turn that off, you see you see the difference in tone. All right, so I'm going to get a paintbrush and with white, low opacity and low flow, about 20 25 percent. I'm going to Darken up the top a bit. All right, leave it like that for the time being. That's all right. I might give it some clouds in the background there too. So um, there's cloud brushes all over the internet. Good place to go looking for them if you haven't got them is to go to um, Deviant Art. If you search through their resources, you'll find lots of um, different sorts of brushes. So um, I've got some in here somewhere. Start with this one. All right. So with white. On it's on a new layer. Turn her off. Put, put that up there so I can see what I'm. See what's actually happening. Right, I might give that a little bit of a blur. Yeah, that looks alright, six pixels. Let's find another cloud. Again, 
you can upload it. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to deal with the green that's left in our hair there from, from the green screen. So put a new layer over the top, turn that into a clipping mask. So if you hold down your Alt key and hover your mouse in between the two layers, get that little um, box with an arrow. Alright, so that's now a clipping mask. Another way of doing it is if you right click on that layer, you can select clipping mask from the, the pop up box. All right. We change the blend mode on this layer to hue, so at the moment it's normal, we'll change it to hue. Alright, um, we want to paint over the green with the colour of her hair, so I'll take a sample. And with a, a round soft brush. Alright, so square bracket t keys resize your brushes and just paint over the bits that are green. Alright, um, so that's dealt with that. I don't like the way it fringes there, so. I think the best way I'm going to fix that up is with some hair. I'll paint some hair. Alright, so I've already sampled the colour there. I'll find a hairbrush. Um, again, brushes can be found in on DeviantArt. If you search hairbrush, you'll find lots of things like this. If I'll show you what it's going to look like. Alright, so there's a few here. I'm going to choose this one here with the four dots. Alright, so before I do anything, we want to resize our brush to, depending on the size of your image, but roughly about the size you think that the hair is going to be. So I've got that at 25 for those four little dots. We'll try that one first. Alright, so you get the pen tool. This is how I do it. And I'll start here somewhere. And drag a line out. Like that. And then stroke. Uh, where is it? Stroke path. And simulate pressure. So what that'll do is it'll start off skinny, go fat, and, and go skinny again. So, like that. So I'm going to do that a number of times, just to fix that up a bit. So you're just gonna have to keep doing this for a for a bit until you get an effect that you're happy with. Just gonna keep doing that a bit longer. I'm just gonna take a slightly darker colour, sample of darker colour in there. And
Uh, I might pause it here and I'll show you the result. Okay, so there's what I've done so far. Almost, um, almost ready. I've added a few more hairs around the fringe there. I might um, add a few up here. Like that. If you guys aren't using the pen tool, I suggest you learn because I do so much with this. It's it's a pretty good pretty good tool. You could um if you just search pen tool on um, YouTube, I'm sure there'll be a million different tutorials on how to use it. it can take a bit of practice, but once you get it, you can do a lot with it. It's good. Alright, when I shot this photo, um, I originally took it with her, she had eyelashes on, but I didn't like the way they were sitting. I thought I could paint them better than um, than they were in Second Life, so... And then, like the eyelashes, don't get me wrong, there was nothing wrong with them, it's just that they're made <laughs> to uh, look good when the eyes are open. So, I'm going to paint in some eyelashes here, so we need a new layer. Find an eyelash brush. Alright, so um, let's try this one. Alright, so you can see I can paint that there. It's not going to work because it's not in the right <laughs> right shape <laughs> like that. Although I do like that eyelash, but if you come over here at the brush tool, um, you can probably find it up here somewhere. Um, Maybe in select. There must be a shortcut to the brush tool somewhere else. Because if you don't have that there, there's another way of finding it. Um, might be through here. Um, Alright, brush, so that'll bring that up, I think. Yep, that brings that up there. Alright, so with this on the brush tip shape, you can change the direction of the brush. So I don't know if you can see that, but all right. So that's more the shape we want now. But um, it's the wrong shape. And we're going to do this. Flip it that way, okay. There we go. Alright, so you can adjust how how big that curve is in it. I'll get it as close as I can. larger because that one's a bit closer what looks at things. I 
Okay, so um, now I'm going to just clean up these inside corners there a bit with that layer mask. Need a black brush. Alright, there's the eyelashes. Okay, now I'm going to do some dodging and burning. There's lots of ways of doing this. I'm not saying this is the best way, but this is the way I'm going to do it. So I'm going to um, do it with a curves adjustment layer. A couple actually. Alright, so first I'm going to do my shadows. I'm just going to drag that curve to darken things up. I'm going to invert the layer mask on that curves adjustment layer by control I to invert it and with a white brush at around 25% down around there somewhere and by flow in that I'm going to paint with a soft brush where the shadow should be I'm just going to darken those up a little bit bracket key to resize the brush so basically just painting where I want the shadows to be a bit darker and in this picture it looks like the lights coming from this side here so put some shadows underneath see gradually bit by bit all right so that's the burning now I'm going to do some highlights so I'll use the same method curves adjustment layer this time I'm going to brighten it up invert that layer in highlights I'm going to make a selection around here so if you hold down the control key and you left click on the tile where um, your model is I'll make a selection around there and now I'm going to paint I'm suddenly going to paint on her So I'm going to follow where the light's coming from with the highlights. Now on the jewellery and, and the lips and that I might go in and do another layer. So I'll do another curves layer. have to redo that because there's a selection around there and it's already uh, painted my <laughs> my layer mask so I'm going to delete that and put a new curves layer there all right now I'm going to go into where that jewelry is and concentrate on that a bit I think Let's 
Let's get those highlights shining. as well. We can make that sparkle even more. There's another way of doing it too. Um, put a new layer and we'll fill that layer with black. So with just the backspace and um, the alt key in the backspace, and it fills whatever the, the, the foreground color is. In this case, it's black, it's the one I want. I'm going to change that to color dodge. I'm going to paint on that with white but not at a full transparency, so we'll try 60, around 60 percent. Now I should be able to get some really sharp white bits kind of build up. It's too much. Let's try 25 percent, <laughs> around 20 percent. There we go. Like that. Let's see how that's looking. making that sparkle. Alright, I'll just pause it here and I'll carry on and I'll show you the end result. There we are, so that's the dodging part of it. So um, let me show you what I've what I've done. Alright, so you can see the jewellery, I've made it sparkle and I put a few extra highlights around the lips and uh, on the dress there. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go back and revisit that sky because um, not the best. Alright, so as as we stand, we have the sky, which is a plain blue colour. I'll put a curves layer over the top to darken up the top, which is there. I'm going to try to um, brighten that up a little bit. So I'm going to do a... I'll do a brightness and contrast adjustment layer over the sky bit, since it's only going to affect the sky. So um, let me brighten it up a little bit. So, right, and uh, now that I've done that, I can see that around here with my um, dodging, I've gone a bit too far overboard. So, what I'll do is um, because it's on a black background, all I need to do is paint that black. So, I'm going to make a 
I'll show you the bit I'm talking about here. You can see around there I've, I've, I haven't, I've missed, uh, I've missed her. So make a selection around her. I'm going to inverse that selection. Um, and then with a back black brush, I'm just going to paint over where I don't want her anymore. So there you go. And um, that's not the best, is it? What have I done? Control Z. Um, Alright, try that again. The original colour I used wasn't actually black. Maybe that's the reason it's changing colours now, but I kind of like the way that looks. No, I don't. Oh, what's going on here? So that's on one of the curves layers, no doubt. Um, select inverse. So we'll just do the same thing. So let's do something different with those clouds. Maybe that one there will move a little bit, make it smaller perhaps. Or we'll just redo it. I'll redo it. this time I think So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her an overall blur because the head, face and hand and chest are a lot closer to, to us than um, the leg is. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to um, convert this to a smart object just by right clicking on it. And I'm going to give it a, a blur. I'm going to choose a field blur. Alright, so that's 15 pixels and the leg and the hips there look alright to me. So I'll click OK. So now with the smart blur, every time you... Um, you do something to that layer, it um, pops them into its own layer within that picture and it gives you a, a layer mask. So if I turn that on and off, I can turn it on and off, you can see the blur disappears. But because it's a layer mask, I can paint with black and reveal the bits I don't want to be blurred. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll turn the brush down to around 30%, so I just reveal it slowly. So these bits here, which are nice and close, so I want 
sharp and the rest of it I want it to kind of fade away into the distance Uh, face in here, nice and sharp. I think this will work. And the hand. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some color adjustments on this. Um, you can you can do this a number of ways. You can use um, you can use gradient gradient maps, um, but I um, I like to use <laughs> a little feature in here down here. It's called uh, color lookup. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do a crisp warm look because it kind of looks crisp and warm, doesn't it? There we go. It's added a, a lot more depth of colour to it. I'm going to try maybe I'll try changing this to screen and then reduce the opacity a bit because it's a bit too bright now. capacity a bit I'm going to do another one I'm going to do candlelight cube and put that to soft light I'm actually going to apply this one so edit um, Image, apply image. Okay, now we're talking. I think that's looking, starting to look pretty, pretty good. <coughs> I'll try something. I don't know if this is going to work, but I can um, add a bit more light to to one corner. So I'll change that to screen. go for a, I'll try soft yellow. screen might help I think that looks alright ok so I um, just want to add something a little bit extra I want to um, might add a bit of dust or some particles or something see how that goes um, just let me find um, particles So just pasted some particles in there. 
Control T to transform. Just going to finish it off through the um, with the camera raw filter. So uh, I'm going to take a stamp of this and put everything onto its own layer. So Control Shift Alt and E makes a stamp. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to I'll try one more filter, uh, one more blur. So blur Gary the iris blur. Let's have a look here. So with this one here, anything within these dots, the centered dots is going to stay in focus and everything else will kind of blur away from there. I think that's pretty effective. So just let that apply. Alright, so there's this before and after and oh, it's made a little bit of a difference but I already had some blurring done so it's not as much as it might have been but I think it looks good. Alright, filter camera raw. I use this in a lot of my edits these days when it opens. Um, I might shift the highlights a little bit and just brighten it up a bit more and the whites. Give it a bit more contrast by darkening the shadows and the contrast bar. the vibrance up a little bit and saturation down a fraction. Alright, so I want it bright but I don't want it burning out like that, being all white. Just want to be able to see some of the colour. I just want the highlights really bright. So on the rings and that, I want them to look like they're reflecting the light. Um, I'll try this. Sometimes this this is works split the tone, you can add a slight colour variation to the highlights and you can do a uh, slight colour variation to the shadows. bit of green a bit of a vignette um, around that mm. all right so I'm just gonna lighten those shadows a little bit
Okay. That's before the um, the camera raw filter, and then the after. I think it's given it a bit more depth and slightly adjusted the colours. All right, that's it. Hope you liked it. Okay, so that's what we have now. Let me show you what we started with. That's the picture that we started with. Um, I think it turned out alright. Um, if there's any... I might do a few more of these videos. Um, if there's something you particularly want to see or learn how to do, you can leave a comment. And uh, if I get some time, I'll see if I can address that. Thanks for watching.